We're going to be talking about some musical terms that have to do with the, the sheet music for Danny Boy today. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to my MCPS classroom. I'm pretending that I am in advanced course right now, but you can go to whichever class you are currently in. And then you are going to go to files. And then notes, and then we're going to download the file that's called Danny Boy Musical Terms. So go look back at my screen for a second. If you're looking at Danny Boy Musical Terms, you can just click on the title, but you can also instead click these three dots and then click download. And then it should be in the downloads folder on your computer. Go ahead and do that on your own computer. The next thing we're going to do is open up that file in Kami. So go ahead and open a tab with the Kami extension on Google Chrome. Remember, it's gonna be the blue circle with a white K and you'll either see that in the top right-hand corner of your browser, or you might need to click the puzzle piece, which is your extensions, and then click on the Kami extension. And we're gonna click open from computer. And then we'll find the file from our downloads folder that is called Danny Boy Musical Terms.pdf. And we're going to open that file. Go ahead and look back at my screen. Your screen should look like this now. You should have Danny Boy Musical Terms open in front of your screen so that you can edit it in Kami. Now, the second thing you're going to need to open is your Danny Boy sheet music. That one looks like this. You should already have that saved to your course Google Drive folder, so you can just have it open in there. So I'm going to come back to uh, my Danny Boy musical terms in Cami, and I'm going to select the text box tool so that I can write my answer here. So the first question says, what is the title of the piece? Well, it's pretty obvious what the title of the piece is because it says it in big, bold, capital letters at the top of your sheet music, Danny Boy. But what we need to know when we're typing this is that if you're trying to uh, indicate that something is the title of a song, you need to put it in quotations. So we're going to put Danny Boy in quotations, and that's our answer to number one. The next question says, who is the lyricist of the piece? Well, the piece just means the song. Those are the same thing. The lyricist means the person who wrote the lyrics. The lyrics are the words. So we're going to look back at our Danny Boy sheet music, and we're going to see if we can find anything that says who wrote the words. And you can see in the top left, it says words by Fred E. Weatherly. So I'm going to go back to Cami. And I'm going to put another text box underneath number two. And where it says, who is the lyricist of the piece? I'm going to put Fred E. Weatherly. The next question says, who is the composer of the piece? Now, the composer just means who wrote the song? Where did the song come from? So we're going to look back at our sheet music for Danny Boy. And you should notice that there's nothing on here that says who wrote the piece. It says it was arranged by Julie Knowles and the words are by Fred E. Weatherly. But remember, arranging and composing are not the same thing. So above where it says arranged by Julie Knowles, it says old Irish air. And Irish air is kind of like a folk song. So that means it's been passed down for so long that nobody knows who the original person was that wrote it. So where it says, um, who is the composer of the piece for number three, we're going to put Old Irish Air. The 
Then on the next question for number four, we just talked about this. It says, who is the arranger of the piece? And remember the arranger is the person who took the piece as it originally was written and then wrote it for whatever voice parts or instruments they wanted it. So this our sheet music says that it was arranged by Julie Knowles. So we're gonna go back to Cami and we're gonna make a text box underneath number four and we're gonna type Julie Knowles. I'll give you a second to do that before I move on to the next question. Question number five says, there are three parts notated in the piece. What instrument is the first part? So go ahead and look at my screen here for a second. I'm gonna point some things out to you. So this is three parts. When you're looking at the sheet music, um, this is the first part. This is the second part, and this is the third part. And we know that because they're all connected on the left side by a single vertical line. They're all connected. So that means that's part one, part two, part three. The same thing happens in the next system. This is your first system. This is your second system. It goes one, two, three. In the third system, it does the same thing. One, two, three. So the question was, what instrument is the first part? Which is this first line here. So it might be kind of confusing at first because there's nothing going on in this first measure. There's just a whole rest. Then in that second measure, there's a half rest and an eighth rest. And then what gives us a hint as to what instrument is happening in part number one is that in that second measure, we have words. And there would not be words for any other instrument except for a singer. So for our answer for number five, we're gonna make a text box underneath there and we're gonna say a vocalist. What instrument is the first part? The answer is it's a vocalist. Now, the next question is what instrument is the second part? And actually we're gonna kind of do number six and number seven at the same time because it's asking about the second part and the third part. Go ahead and look back at my screen here for a second. So the second part and the third part have this little bracket that's connecting them together. So that means those two parts go together. They're one thing. And it doesn't say anywhere on here what instrument is actually playing, but it does say that it starts off with two treble clefs. And then later in the second system, there's a treble clef and a bass clef. That is the kind of thing that happens with a piano. So the way that works is for part number two, that's the piano's right hand. And then for part number three, that's the piano's left hand. So those two are happening at the same exact time. So we're gonna go back over to Cami, and you can do this on your computer as well. We're gonna make a text box underneath number six. For what instrument is the second part, we're going to say piano, right hand. And then for number seven, what instrument is the third part, we're going to say piano, left hand. And for number eight, we need to take a look at the beginning of the piece. So go ahead and look at my screen for another moment. I'm going to point some more things out to you. It, it is asking what is in the key signature of the piece. So what happens at the beginning of a song is no matter what part you're looking at, you're always going to see the clef and then the key signature and then the time signature. And I circled those very poorly. But you have clef and then key signature and then time signature. So this part is the key signature. And you can see that it's the same for every line in the system, for every instrument in the system. So in the key signature, it's asking us what is in it. So that's these two symbols here. We haven't talked about these two symbols yet, but those two symbols that look like hashtags are, are called sharps. So for our answer for number seven, and you can go back and do this on your computer, or sorry, for our answer on number eight, you're gonna make a text box and you're just gonna say, two sharps because that's what we see in the key signature you don't need to know what that means just yet you just need to know two sharps 
Number nine says, what is the time signature of the piece? And we have talked about time signature a lot. So you should be able to recognize that after you have the clef and then the key signature, we have the time signature. And our time signature in Danny Boy says four over four, which means four, four time. So we're gonna go back to Cami. And where it says, what is the time signature of the piece on number nine? We're gonna write four, four time. And we just kind of write that letter like a fraction. We put four slash four time and we call it four, four time. Number 10, our final question says, in which measure does the vocalist start singing? So one last time, look at my screen here. So we said that the way we can tell that a measure is over is by a single bar line. So here's my first single bar line. There's one in uh, the first instrument part, the vocalist part, and there's one in the piano part, in both piano parts. So that means this is measure number one. This whole thing is measure number one, right? So this is like vocalist measure number one and here's piano measure number one. They happen at the same time. And then this next one, because we just had a bar line, this is measure number two. This whole thing is measure number two. This is vocalist measure number two, piano measure number two. And you can see that that's where the lyrics come in. So that means the vocalist starts singing in measure number two. So we're gonna click back over to Cami. You can do this on your computer as well. We're gonna make a text box underneath number 10 and we're gonna write measure two. And remember that anytime you finish anything with Cami, you're gonna click save in the top right hand corner. You're gonna click download. And then you're gonna do two more things. You're gonna upload that file to your course Google Drive folder, and you're gonna turn it in on my MCPS classroom.